Will, I am so stoked for you to be here today. How the heck are you doing, man? Doing good. Doing good. Appreciate it. We've been talking a long time. It's good to finally meet up with you and and uh, talk a little bit. So yeah, it's been a, been a busy year to say the least, but uh, it's been great. It's been an extraordinary journey so far and, and we got a lot of cool things in the work. So um, yeah, it's exciting. It is, man. Well, I'm, I'm going to dive in. There's a lot of different questions I got for you, um, but I guess let's kind of just start a little bit, kind of giving people a little bit of one-on-one in your background. Let's talk about where you're from, how you got involved in, uh, you know, hunting, fishing, the outdoor lifestyle. Maybe, you know, who were some of your mentors? Is this something that you grew up with, with your family? And just kind of give us a, a little sneak peek into that, and then we'll kind of walk through uh, to all the amazing things you got kicking these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was born and raised in, in western Montana. Um, small town, Phillipsburg, Montana. Um, you know, I graduated with 14 kids. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot to do but uh, fish and hunt and, and uh, play sports, chase girls. That's all you did, you know. And, and um, so I grew up with the love of the outdoors. And, um, and, and my uncle Elmo actually is the one that initially got me into hunting and, and uh, got me interested in everything um, in the outdoor space and he's since passed, you know, so it's, it's kind of a cool legacy to carry on uh, for him. And, and um, the outdoors and hunting has helped me in so many ways uh, throughout the years. It, it's incredible, but um, yeah, we just grew up working hard. My family was in the, the lumber industry and sawmilling industry. Um, so we, we learned a lot about business along the way, uh, picked up things we didn't know we picked up, you know, and, and after high school, um, joined the military, um, um, spent some time overseas in Iraq and, um, uh, came back and, and, uh, started business, wanted to hit the ground running when I got back from overseas and, and, um, and started my first business and, and moved forward from there and, and did well in some business and, and did poor, made some mistakes and, and lost my butt. And, and that's all part of growing and learning, you know, and, and I uh, got into real estate and real estate crashed and um, lost everything again, had to start over again, uh, you know, in 2009, 2010. And, um, you know, I was young, as I was in my 20s and, and I learned a lot about overextending and, and, and overextending your credit and, and it just a lot about the financial world, which is really good. It's the best thing that ever happened to me, honestly. Um, so I had to start over again. Um, and then a good friend of mine introduced me to um, the president over at uh, what what then was Critical Power Exchange, just an equipment brokerage company. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I worked there um, for over seven years where I really went entry level and moved my way up through the company. I um, loved the industry, the equipment, the, the people. I, I gained some unbelievably good mentors um, within the industry and and. Um, just business sense itself, you know, Glenn Hansen and Mark McKellie and, and Eddie Becciarelli and, and different people that really just um, gave me a lot of things along the way, just a wealth of knowledge, you know, that, that really helped me and that stick with me all the time, you know, and, and um, so from, from there, um, I, I was, was asked to get into higher management to help run the company. And, and really it was, it was a company owned by by a, a, a group that really didn't have interest in in investing in the business, you know, where it needed to go. So um, I, I, I it really was I was either going to go start my own business at that point or um, buy the assets of their company. And, you know, it was losing a million and a half dollars a year at that point. It was just it was a mess. And um for a lot of different reasons, there was high turnover. There wasn't uh, investment in the inventory. There was uh, mismanagement. There was there was a lot of different things, you know, that that happens in a lot of businesses. But um, ultimately, they 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 agreed to sell me the assets of the company. Um, and when they did that, like I said, we were we were losing our butts, and um, my team had the faith in me to to stick it out. We. Um, you know, the ownership had, had quit paying the lease at our headquarters. We got a three day vacate notice before I even finished the purchase. Um, mm. So we were scrambling. We either had to shut the doors or find a place to work until we could find a permanent home, you know. So um, uh, within a day, we found 
what it used to be like an old church. Um, and it had been many different things, but it was almost right across the street from our building. Um, it had no um, uh, cat five going into it. It had really nothing that we needed to operate because we were online sales and project management. So um, we worked, we, we moved into there within 72 hours, the whole team rallied up and we moved over there worked off hotspot for several months and, and wireless internet, which was a, a terror in itself. Um, but eventually got up and running. I got the purchase uh, completed. And then um, my good friend, Ryan Beckenhauer, he worked with me to, um, to get a new headquarters over in Post Falls. So we, um, we started designing and putting together a, a just awesome new headquarters. And, um, and the following February, uh, one, exactly one year after, um, the purchase closed, we moved over to Idaho and uh, Idaho, Idaho really wanted to move some of our industry into the state. So, um, um, there were some great folks over there that helped us out and, um, gave us a lot of incentives to move over to Idaho. So ever since then, we've just been terrorizing the town, man. We've been growing like crazy and, and, and blessed with the most amazing employees you could ever ask for, which is the only reason I get to do what I love to do. And I'm passionate about now, you know, so, um, we've, our average tenure there is, is over nine years and, um, we just have so much trust and love in that company, you know, and everybody helps everybody out. And it's, um, it's something I've never witnessed before and, and so grateful for it. So, um, that's been, been a heck of a journey and, and, um, you know, along the way got, got married to a wonderful woman and, and had two small children. My little man is, is five now and, and my little girl Ava is, is seven, um, you know, and things, things were going in two different directions. So that ended up in a divorce, which was so difficult in it, in itself, having kids, um, but turned out to be, um, really good. I think for both of us and, and for the kids, I spend way more time with them now. Um, you know, so, um, went through that and now, um, uh, my new gal and I have a, a another baby, baby girl coming in May and the kids are super excited. So, yeah, it's been a whirlwind to say the least. Well, and that's not even, we haven't even brought in what kind of first connected us was with your, all the different things that you got going on centered around the hunting and the outdoor lifestyle. Um, you know, you talk about bringing teams together that work am amazing in all sorts of facets of, of your work life, but now you're doing this and, uh, uh, you know, your passion project, which I can only assume will be becoming more of a work project as this builds, but You've been traveling all across the world, hunting, bringing people, uh, maybe it's people with special needs or, or needing to have those experiences, you know, life-changing events, working with veterans. You're working with all sorts of different people, uh, you know, teaming up with some amazing folks in the outdoor world to provide these experiences that are just so enriching. So I want to know, when did that begin to happen in that pivot? And I mean, working on you showed me the highlight reel of some of the hunts that you have, you know, been on your filming um, some of the behind the scenes of what you got going on. And it's incredible. And I know that that is, you know, an assumed to be release uh, thing. So I, I just kind of want to give people an idea of where you kind of got involved in this and, you know, where this is going. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about other side ventures and just kind of, if you can bring it into that Avenue and then we'll kind of dive deep and in, in, into some things you got kicking this next year. Yeah. Um, so the outdoors, like I said, it's always been in my blood, you know, it's, it's always been my, my safe place, you know? And, um, when I got back for, from overseas and many of the guys that I served with really that getting back into the outdoors and just getting in the mountains and the peace and the tranquility of the outdoors is, is really what made me feel good again, you know, and whole mm -hmm. again. And, and, um, and a, a good friend of mine, um, Daniel, he, he and I, uh, he actually started it and, and I co-founded uh, Wilderness for Warriors. And, and that was an organization that he poured his whole life into, um, every bit of it. And it, it took me two seconds to knew, know that um, I wanted to be part of it, you know, and I, it, you know, it was helping so many people um, get back into something that they love, you know, and take all the negativity and, and whether it's PTSD, whether it's um, physical ailment, if, if loss of limbs, whatever it was from overseas, um, there was something that happened when we got into the outdoors and into the mountains and 
started sharing stories and adventures and, and things like that, that just brought people to a better place, you know, and um, that, that was, you know, a decade ago. And, and ever since then, it's just been a big part of my heart and who I am and, and um, have just wanted to give back as much as possible. And, and um, about a year, year and a half ago, um, you know, I've throughout the years, I've, I've suffered with my own uh, depression, PTSD, um, you know, all, all the way down to suicidal thoughts and weird stuff that you can never explain until you're in the middle of it. And, um, you know, I've, and it made me feel even worse because I, I was so blessed in life with such good people around me, wh whether it's family, employees, beautiful children, um, you know, everything from, from the outside looking in, you know, you've got everything in life and, and people don't understand it, but, um, you know, I went through such a dark time where I, I didn't even want to be here anymore. And some things transpired. And, and, um, and when I came out the other side of that, um, I was so grateful for the few people I had in my life that, that were constants. They were constantly beating my door down, just making sure I was okay, you know, and, and trying to get me out and, and things like that. A lot, a lot of, people in your life are afraid to, to dive in when you're going through something that's really dark and really bad, people kind of take the distance, you know, and, and kind of want to stay away from it, um, which is fine. But, um, you know, the few people that, that were constantly by my side and they, they drug me through it, you know, and, and got me through it, um, are instrumental in, in even being able to get through to the other side of it. But, but when that happened, um, I knew that I was still here for a reason. And, um, that reason is to, to help other people get through hard times. And it, and it, it doesn't have to be, you know, PTSD from war, or from, from anything like that. It can be any, anybody going through a hard time or just needing to pick me up or, sure. um, you know, we've taken some incredible children on, on hunts that, um, you know, have been abused in the past that, um, you know, this, this amazing little girl, Ella, we took, um, on an elk hunt this year and, um, her and her family have dwarfism and, and, you know, she's just this sweetest, cutest little thing in the world, but she can't really fit behind a rifle. Um, and, you know, growing up with that, I can only imagine, um, the kind of criticism you get in the, just the bad people out there that feed your crap every day, you know, sure. and, her, she went out and got a monster bowl. I mean, her confidence level was through the roof. It was so special to see, um, you know, and then we took another uh, little girl Aspen and she's actually our little ambassador, her, um, her and her, her dad and good friend of mine now, Todd, um, they, we took them down to Texas and she had been previously, um, um, abused pretty bad. Um, and, and since her, her father had gotten full custody of her and, but she was going through a really hard time and, and we took her down and just, I mean, we were all in tears the whole trip, you know, and, you know, we went down to try to help her and just get her in a good space and get to where she could trust guys again and, and, and know that she has family and people that support her and love her. And, and it ended up changing us all. I mean, we had, uh, you know, my team, my camera guy, my good friends from Texas, um, my buddy that owns the ranch down there, we all, it was such a special trip for all of us. I mean, we were all in tears throughout, throughout the trip, you know? So, um, you know, and then recently we, we took Donnie, he's, um, he's been in my life for, for several years as a contractor. And he's just one of those guys that you gravitate to, you know, just an amazingly good guy and huge heart. And, over the last year and a half, he's been fighting with cancer and, um, and, uh, thought it was going well. Um, and, um, a little over a month ago, I guess now, um, the doctor said they couldn't do anything. And he, he only had about two months to, to live, um, which is just for anybody. That's the worst thing you want to hear. He's got a beautiful wife, Mary and, and family and, and friends. And, and, um, so we wanted to do something for, for him and his family, just as, you know, a last, let's get out there, have some fun, yeah. get your mind off everything and make some memories, you know? And, um, so we took him and Mary and his best friend, um, Randy down to Texas. This was just a few weeks ago. And 
he had some bucket list items that that he wanted to hunt you know a black buck an axis uh, um, an oryx uh, a big white tail and um we were able to witness him you know sm putting the smack down on all these animals and same thing you know there's tears you're fighting back tears all the whole time mary's crying and making us all want to cry and like just so much emotion you know and and um my better half hannah filmed the whole thing and and we're gonna we're gonna put a big a big film together for his family so that um that they can all witness it and watch it in the future and and um it, w it was amazing man and and um we got got everything back home really quick and and my good friend nick uh, with wildlife creations he busted everything through overnight to get everything bleached and and cleaned up so the family could enjoy the horns with, with Donnie, you know, and he can kind of show off his trophies, uh, you know, before, before, uh, he, uh, gets taken from us. So, um, there's just, there's so much good that comes from bad situations. Um, if you allow it, you know, and, um, so it, it's, it's a blessing to just be a part of it, you know, and, and I've lived so many selfish years, you know, as a, as a youngster and, and just, a a punk, you know, like everything's about you and, and what you're going to accomplish and, and the cars you're going to have and the big houses you're going to have and, and all that stuff. And, and, you know, to finally find your place in life and, and being humbled enough to want to do nothing, but give everything back has, has been a huge blessing. And, and, you know, God has <laughs> pointed me in a direction that, that I'm very, very blessed for and appreciate every day for sure. So, well, when you open the door for that kind of spirit to come in and help kind of direct those things, sometimes you're not in the driver's seat. You're, you're sitting maybe in that, in that, you know, the passenger seat, letting that kind of the next experience come because as you do all these things and you give back, it's more people want to get involved. More people want to be able to help. I've seen those, you know, those posts you've done. Uh, it's inspirational. It, you know, how, it makes other people think, myself included, like, what can I do to give back to my community? What can I do to give back, especially to veterans, you know, who've and the veteran families? You know, it's not just the veterans who go through this stuff. It's the families, too. Everyone's affected. I mean, and you look at things that, you know, terminal cancer. You look at the struggles that, you know, young children be left without mothers and fathers. There's so many different heavy things but when you can put that spark of light and love and just pure spirit out there and, you know, be able to film it and have that experience. And like you said, even like the antlers and things that you're giving back to, to them so you can kind of have those moments and those memories that last forever. Uh, there's so much that's enriching about that. You know, my hat's off to you for what you're doing. Um, and I can't wait to see it because I know that we're just talking about a few examples from like this year. And like there are so many things that you've been doing throughout the years and the things you yeah. have planned. Um, you know, why don't you talk to me about kind of the idea of what you want to have as far as, you know, your, this idea of like a show, uh, as an, an experience of uh, a movement of having these types of experiences, giving back, you know, how do you foresee this moving forward? And I know like a lot of vehicles like this, once they kind of gain traction, you never know where they can go. So I don't expect, you know, I, I know there might be not absolutes, but what is it that you're wanting to do and kind of moving this forward from today here on? So, um, so really when I decided to, um, build the main platform, which we don't even have a name for yet, because mm -hmm. it, it's something that, um, it's really special to me and, and Hannah and, and the other people that are involved in it. And it, it's going to be more than just a hunting show. You know, right. we're not just sitting in the Midwest hunting whitetails, even though I love it. You can see it. Whitetails are, are my absolute, a there's a few there. yeah, they're, they're my absolute <laughs> addiction, but um, we want to bring more adventure to it and, and we want to bring, uh, more of the giving back aspect to it. So, um, if we go to Africa, if we go to Spain, if we go to the Yukon, if, wherever we go, we want to give back. We want to help. Um, we want to educate people on local conservation efforts and, and why we hunt the animals that we're hunting and, and why it's so important, um, to their species and others in the, in the region, you know? And, um, so, there's going to be a lot more to it than, than just hunting. And, right. um, we're going to, um, we've got a lot of surprises. We're, we're going to, um, we're going to release on, on, um, you know, main network TV, um, as well as YouTube and, and we're going to, um, 
work with some of the best in the business. You know, we've got some incredible names in the industry that are, are um, partnering with, with myself to, to be on the show. And um, they've got the same heart. You know, they like to give back. They like to get, get youth into, into the outdoors and hunting, things like that. Um, that is so meaningful, you know, and, and we're not releasing any of it yet, but it's, yep. it's getting close, you know, and, and um, we want feedback on a name. It's something that um, we're going to do a giveaway surrounded around, you know, giving input for, for the, the platform name um, just because it's, it's gotta be special and it's gotta be something that comes from inspiration and, and, you know, so uh, it sounds silly because we've been working on it for over a year and we've, we've thrown around, you know, a thousand different names, but it, it just hasn't, hasn't hit us all yet. So, um, so really that main platform is, um, to build an audience, um, and, and building that audience to, to be able to help people and really inspire other people to, to give back a little bit and then just put a helping hand out, you know, and, and the other side ventures is, is my, my platform that I started, um, a while back. And that's really where, where I take the kids out and, and, and veterans and disabled veterans and, and, um, and, and different folks that just need help. And, um, you know, I, I don't have an official nonprofit. I've, I've never, um, taking any donations, anything like that. I, I just do it as I can, you know, which can be pretty taxing in, in itself. So um, we're going to build this main platform to be able to support that a little bit. And then, um, and then we'll just collaborate with the other side ventures and we'll have awesome hunts and episodes with, um, with our veterans, with our, with our youth, with things like that. And I think it's going to be a lot more inspirational, you know, and, and um, it has, absolutely changed my life and, and made me into a complete different person. I, I, you know, I didn't like who I was in the past and, mm. and, you know, for a lot of different reasons and held a lot of guilt and, and a lot of pain and different things like that. And, and, um, this has really given me a second chance, um, not just to give back and help people, but it's given me a second chance with my family, with my kids, with my companies and employees, with, with really everything. So, you know, being 40 years old now and, and really getting a new lease on life has been um, absolutely incredible for me and, and so blessed to, to have the opportunity because I honestly didn't didn't know how I was going to crawl out of the hole that I that I came came from, you know, and a lot of ups and downs and, and things like that. So um, really, that's that's what the platform is going to be is is to create inspiration and and show people that there is light at, at the end of the tunnel, that, that there, there is opportunity, that there, that there is adventures out there that um, anybody can go on, you know, and we want to take those people on them and, and we want to help people out. And, and we're going to do some wild, crazy hunts along the way. And, and we've got some big things in store, but um, really there's going to be a lot more mixed into it, you know, and, and hopefully inspire more to, to do the same. So, you know, that having, being able to show that all the stories behind the hunts is so incredible. You know, I, I, there's so many wonderful shows out there that are, that, you know, can teach you from A to Z educational yeah. going out in the woods, hunting in this place, you know, and, and giving you tips and tricks and things too. Um, and, you know, I'm not knocking any of them. I think that's great sure. to have that out there. I think having that human aspect of like what's happening, uh, the things that you're doing to fulfill, uh, you know, enrichment and, and just, experience and happiness positivity and helping people you know cross that other side of their struggles is is paramount and it's something that i can totally see you know everyone get behind that because it, it's like the entertainment thing but it like feels your heart and makes feel good being a part of that network and you know when you build things like that everyone else just wants to come aboard and be a part of that too so i can't wait to see you know where this you know goes to all the links uh, that y'all will be you know going to to like have all these hunts around the world and you know enrich so many lives so you know kudos to you for all that you've done and all that you're doing uh can't wait to see all the things you have uh, lined up you know when we talk about going all around the world uh, you showed me a highlight reel of just some of your you know films uh, of some of these hunts with some of these veterans or people that kind of needed to be out there in the woods for their own enrichment and it's all across the board i mean how many countries have you now gone to you've I mean, you've probably done every state in the u.s now and, and then beyond <laughs> uh yeah so we've hunted many many states um this year we got to do a lot of whitetail hunting which which obviously is a huge passion of mine um 
And um, so we've done, um, you know, South Carolina, uh, Oklahoma, Idaho, Montana, Iowa, uh, Texas, um, many states. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of them, but, um, you know, we've been able to to hunt the Yukon with uh, my good buddy, Logan with midnight sun outfitters. Um, he's been trying to drag me up there for years. And, and um, he finally got me up there this last year and, and we ended up just having an incredible time, man. And, and um, it was so <laughs> humbling, like being way back in the Yukon, you know, you're dropped off on a float plane and it it's, it's pretty gnarly. And um, it was the best experience ever, you know, having nothing was, was the best part, you know, and being back up there and, and horse packing in and, and we saw some absolutely unbelievable animals and, and harvested some, some incredible critters. And, um, but we made some lifelong friendships and, you know, there was some struggles. There was, there was definite cold, nasty weather. Then we were, we were super fortunate with some great weather for several days. And so that was a super cool one. Um, we, we did, uh, Kodiak Island for, for, for brown bear. And, um, that's where I met who now is one of my best friends, Dan Walker. Um, you know, he's, he's probably the only crazier hunter than myself. He hunts uh, year round and he's got some world records, archery and, and just a stud, you know, and he's him and I just got back from Mexico, um, mule deer hunting together. And, um, he's going to be a big part of this new platform as well. Um, and then, um, we spent quite a bit of time in, in Africa in different places where, um, you know, I met, um, uh, Garrett Rash, you know, he's a huge guy in the outdoors industry and we become very good friends and, and, you know, he's a part of this new platform and, and have, have, uh, you know, we went to Spain, um, hunting a couple times and, and, um, met some amazing people over there. Uh, and, um, pretty much everywhere. I feel like we've been a lot of places, but you know, the hunts are one thing and I, I, I don't take anything away from the hunt. I, they were incredible experiences, but more so the people that, that I've been able to surround myself with. And now like our family and, and we're building this thing together. Yeah. Um, I feel like it'll happen for a reason, you know, and, and every little place we went, um, I was impacted by people, you know, and I was inspired by people and, um, so it's been incredible this this last year, just really building a network of of good like minded people. I feel like the outdoors and the hunting industry is just that's the one place where I can meet people and just feel like they're genuine, like they're good people, and they have you know like minds and like hearts, and and um, you know there's always bad apples and in, in anywhere you go, but um, the outdoors is I've just met the best people, man, and it's been um, it's been awesome. So. Um, we're definitely excited to to do a lot more and go a lot more places where we're, we're um, we got to take uh, some some veterans over to Africa this last trip and and um, it was just mayhem. There was um, I had two veterans, one of my my employees and friends, and then Hannah and I um, and we met Garrett and, and a, a couple of other good folks over there. And I think in eleven days we. We harvested 123 animals, which was unreal. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So those boys, those boys had fun to say the least. Yeah. And Africa is a target rich environment <laughs> anyways, you know, but um, it was so cool to see those guys, you know, being able to harvest uh, kudu and, and uh, Cape Buffalo and, and all these, these cool animals, you know, and, and um, you know, they're lifelong friends now, you know, and uh, Brian and Michelle were, um, they came over there with us and, um, you know, he had lost his leg and, and almost his other leg and, and several other things in Iraq getting blown up. And, and the guy is an absolute inspiration. You know, he, every day he gives back, you know, he, he is so positive and him and his wife both are very involved with different nonprofits and, and helping other veterans out and things like that. And those are the guys that we want to help. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, yeah. Those are the guys that, that deserve a break and deserve to go on a trip like that. Um, cause they're giving all of themselves, you know? And, um, and, uh, so it, it's been pretty special for sure. Um, so yeah, a lot more to come. That's for sure. Oh man, I am so excited. I can't wait. You know, we'll definitely have to have you on, uh, maybe do even a short little podcast for the big announcement when everything kind of is 
is uh you know solidified as far as what's coming next and what you know avenues you'll be having this uh you know show on um and yeah. i can't wait to, to learn more um i think it'd be amiss of me if i did not bring up and mention the lion on the lambo oh boy dude yeah i i was you know i had seen it when it first happened and i'd never put it together until later on doing some research as, as we're kind of getting ready for this podcast and I was just going. I I wanted to ask about this because I've never seen a mountain lion on the Lamborghini before. That is, that was just something that was like, there we go. I I I can now check that off the list <laughs> of the amazing things. Because being from Texas, I've seen Lord. some wild things. I mean, people in cars with cows in the back seat. I that was that was another one to add to the list of like now you haven't seen it now you have. Talk to me yeah. about what that was like for you. What the goal was turned into a viral sensation and oh. uh ultimately would you go through with it again so go ahead and start us at the beginning on on, on that story if you wouldn't mind um so we've been lion hunting really hard and um and uh yeah so i ended up um getting getting a great tom with it with some good friends of mine and um we we came back to town and it was kind of the first nice day of spring and it was sunny out and um my buddy rob had had his hounds and and um we had the cat and we were going to bring it to my taxidermist and we just happened to be over in my shop and my cars were over there and i'm like what if we what if we put it on the car and brought it over to nick nick is uh he's been my taxidermist forever and and good friend great person and I just like razzing him. So I'm like, let's show up in the Lambo with the lion. And um, so it went from there to, um, okay, we could probably make something of this, gain a little traction. Um, let's post something and let's give away um, a lion hunt and um, a day at the track in the car, you know, for just somebody. And, and we posted this all in the, in the narrative, uh, yeah. just somebody who needs to pick me up, you know, someone yeah. who needs, yeah. um, needs something positive in their life. And so it went from that to, um, just, um, Drew took a short, short clip and I had my buddy, Justin Fields over here. And, and, um, and so we just made this short clip and edited it up and we're like, okay, we'll throw it on couple thousand people will see it and we'll get some good entries um, for this lion hunt and stuff, you know? And so we posted it and overnight it went insane and it wasn't at all what we had expected or what we wanted to happen. Right. Um, you know, but I mean, you put a redneck in a fast car and you're going to get, lines on it i guess i don't i just i don't i just i see it as a car you know i'm i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. feel very blessed and i just love fast cars but um it's still just a car to me that doesn't it doesn't uh, you know make me who i am or or you know anything other than just a car that goes down the road you know so i, I didn't i put the line on there and strapped it to the fender wells and and went down the road so um you know it didn't think of it much past that but um I wouldn't do it again. That's for sure. Um, you know, I think I probably had more backlash from hunters in the community than non hunters, um, you know, which, which I respected, you know, and, and if I could have pulled it back, uh, I, I would have, but there was no stopping it once right. it, once it got out there. But um, no, you know, I think I, it, it was for a, a good cause, but it was only meant to go, you know, a little so ways and, right. and have some good people sent our way that we could help out. And, and it went way, way further. And, you know, I think it does, it gives, you know, anti hunters ammunition and look at that dumbass putting a, a lion on his car and, and blah, blah, blah. You're going to get, you're going to get all that, which is fine. But um, I also think that we don't need to feed the fire as, as outdoorsmen, you know, I think that they, they get enough, um, ammunition to, to come at us. So I would definitely wouldn't do it again. Um, but there was some good that came out of it. And, yeah. and so, uh, you know, I think about it that way, but it still pops up 
every once in a while, I'm like, please, please, please don't start going all over again, you know, because you just, you can't stop it. And uh, yeah, so that was quite the, the experience. And when it hit like uh, national Fox news and things like that, I thought I was going to have death threats and who knew what was going to happen, but it actually, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't that way. You know, I, you obviously get, get a lot of comments of people hating and things like that, but um, you know, you got to take it as constructively as possible and, and, uh, and move on. But yeah, that was, that was something that wasn't meant to be that crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it just kind of blew up in that sense, man. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I look at like what you're talking about now and your, you know, in this, in these projects and this show and all the things that, um, are going to come from this and the spotlights there. And, you know, it, it's, I, I am so excited to see this, like I said, see this build, see what comes from, from the show um, and where these are going to be going. Cause that's something that I think is what's going to be turning viral. That's the thing that's going to really continue to build every single year in snowball. Cause when you get behind the stories of people um, and especially the struggles that we all go through, every single one of us goes through it. Um, and I appreciate you, by the way, sharing, you know, part of yours and, you know, you're, you overcoming it. Some of the things that you tuned into, I think going into uh, working with, you know, worked a lot of veterans who talk about nature, about fishing, about hiking, about hunting, about getting out there into the, in, into those elements that really soothes them. And they bring a part of that back with them into their daily life. And I think it's so important for us. Um, and again, you know, I'm, all about doing anything I can to get back to veterans. So if there's anything ever I can do to help you guys, if you need some maps along the way for some of the hunts, uh, you know, I can do that. If there's, you know, whatever you need me to do, just kind of help to provide this platform. Cause these are the moments I, I believe that, you know, you're going to be putting out, they're going to be going truly viral and taking it to that next level. And uh, you know, that, that's something that I, I can't wait for, uh, you know, you to accomplish and, and kind of be able to share. So I also forgot to uh, just say one Thank you for your service. And what branch of the military were you in? What did you, what were you doing? So I, I was um, in the army uh -huh. and um, w when I went overseas, I served as um, a he hat -E trainer. So um, explosive awareness trainer. So um, we trained um, troops coming into, into country on explosive ordnance, TTPs, what to look for, how to identify them, um, who to reach out to um, if they, if they found a roadside bomb, car bomb, um, things along those lines. So we worked close with the, the EOD teams over there. Um, and, uh, it, it was really re rewarding, man. It was a, it was something that we, our whole team felt like we were making change over there, you know, and, and that's what was killing our guys. So, um, getting as much information out there as possible before they hit the road, um, was really important. So, um, it was a cool mission and, and something we were very proud of, but, um, it was good. And, and I got back from overseas and fully intended on going back over, um, and then ended up getting in, um, uh, wrecking one of my semis. I, uh, had my family get a couple semis for me and started a trucking companies, uh, company before I got back. Um, and I was in one of those trucks and, and, um, uh, someone pulled out in front of me and I ended up rolling and, and breaking my back and my neck up and everything really, really bad. And, um, so I ended up getting, I was still in the military and ended up having to get medically discharged, which at the time was, was heartbreaking, you know, as, as, uh, that was a, that was a tough one, especially when I saw, um, you know, friends and loved ones getting hurt or, or killed over there and, and knowing I couldn't, couldn't do anything, you know, especially with the knowledge that we had. Um, so, um, um, you know, that was a tough one, but, um, uh, but it was something I'll, I'll never change. It was a crazy time over there. And, and, you know, it makes you grow up so fast. I spent my 21st birthday in, in Baghdad. So, um, you know, it makes a man out of you quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I come from a family of veterans and, um, and my cousin was over in, in, in Iraq probably around the same time you were and just the different things. Like <laughs> he told me one day he was, a. Uh, he said he, he realized the day he needed to quit cigarettes when he was behind the glass and passenger seat of a vehicle at like three in the morning, lit up a cigarette and then heard, and he's like, looked up and the bulletproof glass had caught the bullet that was about to go right through his freaking in, in between his eyes. And he's like, Jeez. you know, I've been told not to smoke cigarettes by my mom, but now 
we talked yeah. about, you know, and the near misses that he had and then the not so near misses that his friends had and like coming back and the struggles of like trying to be a survivor when yeah. your friends didn't make it and the guilt and all that. I mean, I, that's one of the things I'm, yeah. I'm working on doing this next year is I want to do it about once a month where I'm doing a podcast that is by for about veteran uh, awareness, mental health uh, awareness, anything we can do to kind of shine the spotlight on, you know, this, this 22 a day thing is just, it's, it's too, too much, man. And 22 too many, yeah. right? Like it's, it can't be happening and um, whatever yeah. I can do. So I've got a bunch of foundations and organizations that I'm working with. There's some uh, angler uh, Patriot anglers here in Texas that uh, they take out a, a bunch of folks in, in the, the fishing realm. Um, so I'm going to be on a part of those and kind of, I'm kind of a journalist of the sorts and, and writing that out. But I, that's something that I get behind every single day that I possibly can. Anybody, you know, trying to be a conduit to the message, man. Cause that's, yeah. to me that I, I think those are the folks who, you know, that teachers, first responders, man, those are the people that I think should be taking care yeah. of the most in our society. Normally yeah. It's I, not, they get no. the shaft. That's, that's the shitty part is you're, it just isn't that way, you know, and, and any awareness that we can raise and, and, people seeing like lives get turned around and, and actually getting a second chance at life instead of just going in the bedroom and shooting themselves, you know? And, yep. um, and I was that person. I, I, I was there and um, I can tell you it is the worst place in the world to be. And when you're there, you don't think about the people you're leaving behind. You know, everyone right. says suicide is selfish. It is selfish. And, and I agree. And I've got a beautiful family and amazing people in my life. But when you're in that place, there, there's nothing else that crosses your mind. Um, it's a, it's a scary, scary place to be. And, um, if I can help the, even a few guys from being in that place, um, uh, of darkness and, and bring them through to help them out, to get them in a better place, I'm going to do it every day for the rest of my life. You know, How, and, how'd you get uh, out of that? Um, I hit absolute rock bottom, man. And, um, I, I, I tried to kill myself and, um, and I was gone for 17 minutes and, um, that 17 minutes was the longest 17 minutes of my life. And, um, by the time the paramedics got there, um, I had been, um, getting CPR for those 17 minutes. Um, but I was, I was gone and, and, they didn't think that they were going to be able to get me back. Um, somehow the paramedics were able to, to bring me back. Um, and uh, on the way to the hospital, my heart stopped again. Um, and uh, they got me going again um, and then made it to the hospital. And, and they were able to, to, to get me going again. Um, but that was the point in my life where um, – I knew what it felt like, you know what I mean? I, I knew what that rock bottom felt like and, and it is the absolute worst place you could ever want to be. You know, the, the, the things you do, the people you associate yourself, the, the terror that you subject yourself to, you know, is, um, it is, it'll tear your whole life apart, you know, and I'm, I'm lucky I didn't lose my kids, my family, my businesses, my everything, you know, and that's where the amazing people in my life, um, really came through for me and believed in me and, and, and helped me through it, you know, all the way down to my ex-wife, you know, she is, she was so graceful through the whole thing. And, and I don't know that she believed in me, <laughs> but uh, she knew that the kids needed their dad. And, yeah. um, and um, you know, she with some, some tough love, she really, really helped me through it, you know, and, and um, I'll always, always thank her for that because it was, mm -hmm. um, you know, a time where I didn't really deserve anything. I didn't feel like, you know, and, and, um, so it's definitely, it's definitely been a trying time man. and, and, um, it's a story I've never, um, never really told, but I want people to know, you know, I, w I want people to know that it, it's okay to be at rock bottom, but there is damn sure a way to get out of it. And, um, you know, I waited till it was too late and, Thank God somehow by the grace of God got through it and coming out the other side, I knew that I had a purpose and I knew that God wanted me here to do something and I am damn sure going to do it um, every day, you know, so that 
that really is, is my, my motivating factor in, in everything that I do every day. I think that, um, you know, everybody sees the glam and the, the perfect life and the hunting and the cars and the, the, um, all the stuff we're blessed with in life. But, um, there's a lot of struggle that people have that, that others don't know about, you know, and I think that it's important that they do, you know, and I've never told my story, you know, and I've always, always been ashamed of, of myself and, and who I allowed myself to become and, and, um, you know, the, the way I treated situations and, and things along the way and, and the way I treated certain people and, and, um, it's just, it's not something anybody's going to be proud of, but that doesn't have to define who you are either. You know what I mean? Like it, it if you use it constructively and, and learn from it and, and find purpose in life, you can come out of anything. And I only know that because I have, and, um, I'm not one to preach to anybody because I've, I've been trying to preach to myself and get myself to a good place, you know, but I, I do know what it's like being at rock bottom and, um, being in the absolute darkest place you can be in life to where you don't want to live anymore. And, um, coming out of that was, um, was a hand of God. And, and I'm certainly not going to waste any moment that I have moving forward, you know? So, um, really that is, um, you know, in reality, the, <laughs> the inspiration, um, behind what I'm doing, you know, and I don't want to see other people go through that, man. I don't, it, it's, it's such a scary place to be. Uh, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Um, but I'm so blessed with the people in my life that, um, support me that I can talk to, you know, there's very few that even know this story. Um, you know, but I, I feel like it's time that, that, I, I do put it out there and um, as hard as it is to talk about and, and, you know, put out there to anybody, let alone everybody. Um, I think it could help, help people, you know, and um, ultimately that's, that's what I'm living my life for right now. So if it helps one person, uh, you know, to reach out and to, to, to get through and, and work through that shit and get out to the other side, then, um, then it's worth telling my story. You know? It is a hundred percent. I mean, that sharing our testimonies and what we have, our hardships, the things that make us who we are, the human nature, and like being able to connect with other people and letting them know that it's okay that you've hit rock bottom, but there is the light. There is a ladder. There is a way to climb out of this. There's a way to move forward. There's a way to work on healing yourself. It won't happen overnight. It's not yeah. something that's going to be in. It, but at least you can get that sliver of hope that that will give you that next edge to get through another day and then build upon the momentum of the last day and be able to surround yourself by the inspirational stories of yourself and other people who have gone through it and can be able to get to that other side. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. Thank you for being so open and honest and for deciding to come forth and talk and share your story. Um, it It's something that we, you know, we need to come together uh, and humankind and realize that, you know, we are all here to help each other, that we'll all make yeah. through together, um, that we need our brotherhood, our sisterhood, our families, our friends to all rally around at any point in time so that we don't have to have any of the tragedies of that we see every day all too often yeah. where somebody lost hope, lost that sliver, didn't have that next spring of the ladder to climb up. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you and other people are there to, to help provide that opportunity because we need it in this world and we need more positivity and Hey man, thanks for being a beacon of it yourself. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I, I do have two last questions. Um, one of yeah. which is about your legacy. Um, you know, I've been asking everyone who's been coming on about how they want to be viewed, you know, their their legacy, maybe, you know, personally and professionally. Um, and I know you got a lot uh, of Richmond uh, that you can kind of talk about in, in both of those. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving, you know, listeners a, a little bit of an idea of like how you view legacy and, and you know, what you want to be remembered for. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a big question that, that I have in my, my mind every single day, especially as of late, um, um, over this last year. Um, like I said, I, I feel like I lived for myself and selfishly and, and hurt a lot of people along the way and, and, you know, did things I'm not proud of. And, and 
and just life and relationships and, and things like that. And, you know, a lot of things I'm not sure I'll ever forgive myself for, but, um, you know, you, you talk a lot and think a, a lot about, you know, who's going to be at your funeral? What are they going to say at your funeral? And, and what type of legacy you are actually leaving behind. And, and at the end of the day, I just want, I want my kids to be proud of me. And I, I want, um, I want to make enough of a positive difference in this world that will carry on. And uh, I've been over the last year fighting every single day to do just that. And, and we're going to keep doing it and until my last day. And, and I think for me, that's, that's all I care about. You know, I, 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 I don't need to leave my kids with, with millions of dollars. I, I want to leave them with memories and I want to leave them with viable businesses that they can take over if, if they want to work hard and, um, and they're going to inherit a lot of shoulder mounts, you know, but, but I want them to know that I, that I did good by people and that I help people and, and that we inspired other people to do so as well. So, um, you know, all I think about every day now is just making my family proud, you know, and, and, um, doing the right thing by others and, and giving back. So really, I don't know what, what more you could want, you know, when you go than that. So. Yeah, no, good answers, man. I appreciate you sharing that and, uh, you know, diving into your personal there a bit. Um, you know, the last thing I just wanted to know is where can people join this journey? How can they follow you, uh, and kind of make sure whenever you're making that next big announcement that they got their finger on the pulse. So give us your yeah. socials. Where is the best place to follow this journey? Yeah. So, um, Right now, it's just the other side ventures. Um, you can look up on on Instagram um, and Facebook, and then and then Will Alt. Uh, I, I'm on on Instagram and Facebook as well. You can you can look me up there. Um, if you if y'all know of anybody who is going through a rough time, needs some help, um, let's try to help them out. Let's try to get them on a trip. Um, if you want to be a part of taking a veteran or youth or somebody in need on a trip, um, I won't take your money, but I'll take you on a trip and you can, you can see what it feels like firsthand uh, to be a part of something like this. And, um, you know, as I move forward into this, that that's one thing that I think will change more lives than, than anything else. And I think we'll get more people on board with helping, you know, you can donate a thousand dollars and know that it went to a good cause. And then you're like, okay, yep, I did my, did my good deed. I, I'm good. But actually experiencing, um, the change in the heartfelt um, love through one of these hunts, outdoor adventures, uh, will change somebody forever. And I know that 100% with all my heart. So, um, you know, if you all want to be a part of, of what we're doing and and go on a hunt with a veteran and, and, and see the changes and the difference that you can make in someone's life, um, let me know and we'll, we'll set it up and, and you can go along and you can be a part of it and, and you can witness that change, you know? So, um, we, we haven't released any of our main platforms yet. Um, we gotta make sure they're perfect. It, it's sure. something that I've had a vision for quite some time now and, and we gotta make sure the name is right. And we gotta, um, you know, we are going to, um, go to network television, whichever platform we decide to go with, you know, we want, want to make sure that we're able to really show our hearts and our views and, and not have to, um, adhere to somebody else's beliefs, you know, right. and same thing with sponsors. I haven't taken any sponsors just because, um, you know, I'm not doing it for the money. This has nothing to do with that. Um, you know, I think that eventually here we will start taking sponsors for sure to, to, so we can impact and help more people. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get back with, with, uh, with you and, and when we release everything. And, um, but as of right now, just go to us, our social media and, like I say, message me if you if you want to go on a trip and and be part of helping somebody and changing someone's life. It's 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 quite the feeling. So you can always reach out to me. Wonderful. Well, I, I know you've done just that. I've seen it on the videos. I've seen it on your posts. Um, definitely bring some, you know, some friends along and everyone join in. Check this out. There's some wonderful uh, adventures to come, uh, wonderful people to help. And uh, I just want to say thank you again, Will, for all that you're doing and all you're giving back. It's a wonderful thing all together. And, and uh, I definitely appreciate you. Uh, and I thank you for coming and joining me today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I sure appreciate it, bud. Cheers, man. We'll, we'll talk soon, man. Can't wait. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye, brother.